y'all welcome back to my channel thank you so much for being here today my name is Danielle if you don't know that already around these parts okay we use smart and logical decision making with a sprinkle of manifesting to create the lives that we want before i jump into today's topic go ahead and hit the like button go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you aren't subscribed already hit the notification bell so you will know every single time that i upload a new video which is either on Tuesdays and Thursdays or Wednesdays and Fridays okay so today I want to talk about listen this is gonna be a very brief topic I do plan on talking about this a little bit later more in depth and maybe over a series of videos um so I'm just gonna to keep this a little light so I don't start crying on camera I'm just going to run through a few ways to not let your grief dictate your life one of the most important things that I want you all to understand is that there you know there are many facets of grief there are many ways to grieve and there are many things people grieve you know when you hear the word grief you, you know we automatically think death and you know that is the ultimate type of grief but there's also grief in starting a new job there's grief in ending a relationship there's grief in cutting people out of your life you know there's so many ways and so many moments that people have to grieve and i think that if we recognize that it'll be a lot easier to process and a lot easier to move forward in my particular situation my grief is for you know well really grief is for myself but i I have been grieving the loss of my brother my brother died in 2000 in the week before Christmas December of 2018 you know I recorded an entire video I wept and cried messed up my makeup through the whole video I just deleted it okay so right now I'm in a good mood I can talk about it without crying and so you know but anyway without getting into too much detail you know my brother died very very unexpectedly in his sleep at 29 like the healthiest person in my family and so I had to figure out the best way for me to grieve okay much like my brother we are very and we are very analytical people we are very logical people we aren't the most emotional people in the world so we try to rationalize but you know my brother is transitioned from this world so he can't really speak on this because he ain't had to deal with it okay but i wanted to be even productive in my grief so i had to make a choice listen first of all i want to say that there is absolutely no such thing as seven stages of what is it five stages of grief or seven stages of grief i think it's five no there is absolutely no such thing as that what i wanted to do was <sighs> grief productively okay i had to make a conscious choice to not let my grief define the rest of my life now this is about to get really dark okay but everybody dies okay everybody dies and it's gotta happen again <laughs> like so it's like they, you know i don't want to fall apart every time someone transition into this life and i don't want people to fall apart when it's my time to leave this life you know so i you know and besides that i know it would have done my brother an injustice and he would be you know very disappointed to know that i allowed myself to fall apart because he left this world so i wanted to be productive and i did not want grief to define me now one of the ways that i try to balance it is by allowing myself to feel those emotions allow allowing myself to cry allowing myself to just be in the moment for that moment but i limit 
the moment because what I don't want to do is dwell and then go into uh and just go into a full-on episode I don't want to do that that's not productive that's not in it and my brother would be very disappointed to know that I did that he was very big on success he was very successful and he was very big on productivity okay one of the ways that I you know another way you know of course the first way was allowing myself to feel when those feelings came forward but also allowing myself to enjoy the memories to enjoy now a lot of this is better said easier said than done for some people but at the end of the day none of your loved ones will want you to fall apart and slip into a depression or you you know when at the beginning I had those moments where it felt like what is my purpose for being here like I don't want to be here if my brother isn't here like how can I like go like I don't know how to live without him what I had to do was kind of rewire kind of rewire those trains of thought you know we all have a set amount of time we're gonna be here some people are here for longer some people aren't and so what I wanted to do was allow my life to speak for me and to leave a legacy the way my brother did I felt you know kind of like a crappy person hearing about you know you know to me he was just my brother and I knew he was a great brother I knew he was a great person I knew people loved him but it was like listening to people talk about him at his funeral was like oh my god what have I been doing for the last 30 years and so another way that I you know was able to not allow my grief to define my life is to become the person that he would be proud of. This very camera that I'm recording on was my brother's. It's one of the only things that I took that was his and I vow to do something with it, to become, use it to become successful. So that is the way I will honor my brother. I won't honor my brother with my tears because my tears are for me. My grief, you know, the grief that I experience in the moments that I experience them, that's for me. At the end of the day, we're, we cry, we grieve over our loss. You know, to some degree, you know, my brother didn't lose anything. When your loved ones leave, you know, they become their higher self now. They're no longer bound to the physicalities of this world and to this physical body. You know, and so I believe that they even have more access to us than we have to them. So in that train of thought, at at least that's the way I like to think of it so in that train of thought you know I have to understand that the tears that I shed is for me okay my brother had a lot that he wanted to do in his life uh, but his number was called and so maybe the work that he did in his 29 years he was here was his work and his work was finished and so there's something that I need to do and not only do I want to do it to make my brother proud to honor my brother and all of the things that he stood for but I also want to be successful for myself and I understand that my grief and my tears and my sadness and my disappointment and my anger that's mine that's my burden to bear and everyone who lose people that's their burden to bear okay and that is an intimate moment for me you know I'm pretty sure everyone thought I was gonna say therapy and I thought about going to therapy you know because I had been thinking about getting a therapist anyway but I thought about going to, the, to therapy and one of my friends were was lovely enough to try to help me find a therapist but you know what I'm my own therapist like I really didn't think that I need it <laughs> maybe I'll feel different later but as of right now and that was almost you know going on two years ago like a year and a half and I mean I still don't think that I need it now so for me you know <sighs> grief for me is intimate and 
I had to recognize that this is something that I will experience again and is something that will never go away. There's no five steps of grief and then you're just over it. You forgot your loved one existed. No, if anything for me, it's reliving those steps over and over and over again. Every time you wake up in the morning and you realize, oh, my brother really ain't here. Like you have no idea. Maybe some of you probably do, but that happens all the time. Probably multiple times a day. I have to like, I'm reminded that my brother isn't here. Like, wait, like I can't, so I can't talk to him. Like I can't, if I text his phone, he, he not gonna text back like I can't what like I don't understand so those moments happen all the time like it's not something that happens over the course of a year and then it's never heard of again no it happens all the time sometimes it happens and it's easy I can smile at his memory sometimes I'm in the fetal position crying in my bed in the dark but my key to that is I only do it for a little while, okay? I give myself a moment to cry, I wipe my tears, and I get up. And I don't allow myself to dwell in those feelings because just like I don't want to dwell in that, I don't want, when it's my turn, I don't want anyone to allow their life to, you know, turn into shambles because I became my higher self because I transitioned into who I really am so you know th that is just a few of the ways like I said I'll go into this a little bit deeper you know later on <laughs> and I have a lot in store in this topic because I, I mean if I do say my so myself I believe that I'm handling it way better <laughs> astronomically better than I thought I would have if you told me this when my brother was still alive like I would not have thought that I would be you know so put together right now um but that's just a few things that I wanted to mention about it you will hear about this topic later because I have a lot of tools and specific things that I want to share with you so if you are grieving if you you know have to deal with grief if you have dealt with grief for if you deal with grief in the future that you'll have some tools that you will be able to look back on and use so you can stay productive so you can stay ultimately happy and so that you can be the person that your loved one wanted you to be that is all that I have thank you so much for watching this video like comment and subscribe hit the notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video and I will see you lovely people in the next one.